Well, the UK Labor government claims it will deport more than 14,000 illegal migrants and foreign criminals by the end of the year. But the plan is being overseen by Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, the same Home Secretary who, in 2015, boasted... Refugees welcome. Does not fill you with much hope, does it? Joining me now is Sky News contributor and GB News host Emily Carver. Emily, good to see you. So the Home Secretary once declared refugees are welcome. Now she claims she's going to deport thousands of illegal immigrants. Will this plan work? Uh, it's interesting because the Home Office under Yvette Cooper have already rebranded illegal migrants as irregular migrants. So that just shows you the direction of travel here. There are a few other things. Even if the Home Secretary does manage to deport 14,500 people in the next six months or so, that is an absolute drop in the ocean. It's estimated there are currently about 1.5 million people in this country illegally, so she's got a lot of people to get through. We also have a backlog of about 118,000 people waiting on an asylum decision under Labour. All of them will be able to apply, even if they've arrived illegal, illegally. You've also got the fact that the number of people who come to this country via small boats across the channel in the next six months will likely outnumber those that she does deport. Uh, so in this country, we don't seem to have any meaningful border controls, really, and we still have absolutely no idea how Labour is going to deter people from wanting to make that journey across the Channel in a small boat. So it's not looking too hopeful. No, I mean, it sounds like the plan's been shot to pieces before it even begins. It sounds shambolic. And this is also the same Home Secretary who was overseeing a plan to treat extreme misogyny as extremism. Now, Emily, what is the threshold for extreme misogyny that would dub somebody a terrorist? I think we know what this means. I think it means more speech laws, uh, more online regulation, a distraction from actually the real things that are harming women in this country. We have uh, next to no rape convictions in this country. If you're sexually assaulted, it's highly unlikely that the perpetrator is going to be found and then go to jail. And what on earth? How on earth are the government or the police going to tell the difference between a moderate misogynist and an extreme uh, misogynist? I mean, surely the hatred of women is quite an extreme position uh, in any case. But really, we've got sexual harassment on public transport through the roof. We've got rape convictions on the floor. We've got grooming gangs up and down this country still. I genuinely think that what we're going to see is things like teachers referring boys to the Prevent Programme, which is our counter-terrorism programme for watching too many Andrew Tate videos. I really do think that this is just a distraction from actual real-world violence against women in this country that doesn't seem to be getting better. Yeah, that's a real shame. Uh, yeah, another ridiculous plan, clearly. Now, let's pivot to the royals now. It's been revealed a royal aide made a brutal assessment of Meghan Markle after she joined the firm, describing her as a complete narcissist and sociopath, basically unhinged. Emily, that was the description. <laughs> Goodness me. I mean, but this doesn't surprise me. I mean, Megan is clearly, to be generous to her, she's clearly not a very easy person to work with, is she? I mean, we found out a few days ago that her chief of staff had quit after only three months in the job on the eve of their uh, quasi-royal trip. Uh, to Colombia. That would make it the 18th person who has quit uh, since they just got married in 2018. Well, at least 18. That's just the ones we know. We also know that Meghan is finding it extremely, extremely hard uh, to find a CEO for her uh, cooking and lifestyle business, American Riviera. Uh, so we know that uh, there have been a series of bullying allegations back when she was a working royal. She allegedly made staff members cry and again uh, quit uh, the role entirely. So I wouldn't be surprised if these allegations against her are true. She may well be a bit of a narcissist. And it would not surprise me either at all. Emily Carver, great to see you as always. Thank you for joining us.